What is up, everybody? Welcome back again. We are going to do a segment today because I'm just, I'm just fed up. I'm fed up. Um, we're, and we might start to do multiple of these. Um, this might be like a little spinoff series we do. The what type of stupid nonsense is Richard Sherman going to say today? I mean, I, I am completely fed up. It is time for Richard Sherman to be fired on Undisputed. He ruins the whole show. He makes it unwatchable. All he wants to do is argue back and forth with the staff. And if it's not a topic or a conversation that he wants to talk about, all he wants to say is shut up and I don't want to hear it. And you don't know what you're talking about and blah, 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 and make faces and, and literally ruin the whole segment to the point today when they were talking about the San Francisco and Lions game last night and trying to evaluate the things that happened, why it was stupid, which we did a video about last night, Dan Campbell not taking the points, why it was stupid. Oh, he didn't want to hear about it. He didn't want to talk about it. That Reynolds clearly was a great throw, good route, great play call on the fourth down, despite it was a stupid decision in the first place to go for it. The play worked and Reynolds dropped the ball. Wide open catch, not contested, just stone cold dropped it. Didn't want to didn't want to admit that it was a drop. Didn't want to admit that the pass to Iuke where Purdy throws a clear interception and beams the safety in the face, which then turns into a bounced up catch by Iuke. Phenomenal play by him to maintain concentration and play all the way through the end of the play and make that catch. That that wasn't a lucky play. It's just a 51 yard completion. I mean. The segment today was unwatchable. And this isn't the first time. This is multiple times that Richard Sherman just says absolute nonsense and wants to argue technicalities of bullshit that, I mean, literally just make him sound so dumb. I mean, that is the point of these shows. We're not analyzing everything to the T for exactly what it was. It's a show we talk about hypotheticals and hyperbole and and what could have happened, what should have happened. If somebody would have made the play, could they have changed the game? That's literally the point of the shows. And he doesn't want to have those conversations. I mean, it's just absolute nonsense. And for any of you guys who have watched Keyshawn on ESPN or now on Undisputed, Keyshawn's a very mild-mannered guy, Keyshawn Johnson. And to the point where Keyshawn's like just frustrated like hey can can we just analyze the game can we talk about the show or talk about the game please richard are, are are we allowed can we do that are we allowed to just talk about the game and analyze the game i mean it was it was unbelievable nonsense but let's get into one of the many which i've talked about before in the show ridiculous things that richard sherman has said let's talk about the ridiculous shit that he said today which was on the fourth down, Skip asking him, I mean, come on, Richard, look look at that. Is that a drop by Reynolds? No. It's look looks looks like a fourth down stop to me. No well, yes, it's a fourth down stop, but but did Reynolds drop it? Clearly, we all watched the game. Yes, he dropped it. No, it it it, it, it doesn't matter, Skip, it's a fourth down stop. Yes, it does matter. It's a stone cold drop. I mean, it, if he catches the easiest pass he has to catch all day other than the third down that he literally dropped on the next drive, the two easiest passes he's probably had to catch all season, if he doesn't drop those, yes, it's a different conversation. And that's the point of this is, yes, we are talking about if a play like that that is made 99% of the time is made, we might be having a different conversation. Detroit maybe doesn't lose that game. They run out more clock. Maybe San Francisco doesn't have time. Maybe they go down and score a touchdown there, and it changes the dynamic of things. Of course, that's a rational, reasonable conversation to have. But, no, 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 I, I don't talk about what ifs. There's there's if Bayless. I don't talk about what ifs. I, I live in what is, not what ifs. It's a fourth down stop. That's what it looks like to me. And then talk about the fact that on the Purdy ball, which is really, this is really where he starts looking really, really dumb. Talk about, well, I mean, come on, Richard. That He literally throws this ball. Should that not be an interception? Does, 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 isn't that a lucky? No, no, no. It looks like a 51-yard completion to me. It's a 51-yard completion. That's what it is. No, I mean, come on. It's, it's a lucky play. It bounces off the defender's head. Nope, it's a 51-yard completion. That's what it is. Come on, dude. Literally, 
let's not pretend like that should have happened. Let's not pretend like that <laughs> that catch wasn't lucky, that that was a good throw, good decision. I mean, come on, man. You're literally just going to say, nope, it, there's no luck. There's no nothing. It's it, that, that wasn't turning point of the game. Nope, it's just, it's a 51-yard completion. That's all it is. The what is is a 51-yard completion. Like Keisha said, yeah, man, on paper, yes, it's a 51-yard completion. We know that. But we're just saying it's lucky if the defender catches that ball, that ends the game probably. And, and that's true. If Detroit gets the ball back there, it could have very possibly ended the game with Detroit's ability to run the ball, which is a whole thing that we didn't talk about yesterday. They only ran the ball eight times in the second half. What, what are you doing? But Detroit's ability to run the ball, run clock. I mean, yes, that could have very easily ended the game. And the fact that you're going to sit there and not say, hey, you know, whew, we got away with it. Not a great throw. Ayuk made a fantastic catch and we got away with it. You know, sometimes the ball bounces your way. That's how it goes. You know, ha happy, you know, happy we were able to get that done and, and you know, turn that play into a 51-yard completion. Good for us. Thank, you know, thank God we were able to do that. Instead of doing that, you're going to sit there and say, nope, there's no luck about it. He literally said, there's no such thing as luck, Skip. He literally said, quote verbatim, Richard Sherman, quote, there's no such thing as luck. It's just a 51-yard completion. As Shannon Sharp said on ESPN, which is what I would have said back to Richard Sherman, oh, I'm sorry, Richard, was that a diagram play? Do you guys have that in the playbook? Uh, Brock throws it up, bounces it off the off the D, off the DB's head, and, and IU catches it. That That's in the playbook? That That's the design? No, that's lucky. Come on. I mean, you sound ridiculous. I mean, it's so absurd to sit there and pretend that that isn't a lucky catch, lucky play. Granted, phenomenal job by by Ayuk. All credit to him to keep the concentration, track that ball in the air, off the bounce, and then still maintain, you know, the catch and hold it all the way through the ground and turn that into something. Hats off to him. I mean, no argument. One of the great plays we'll see in playoff football by Brandon Ayuk. Fantastic play. But to sit there and say that the Edelman catch in the Super Bowl against... Atlanta wasn't a lucky catch, or the Brandon Ayuk catch isn't a lucky catch, or the helmet catch by David Tyree isn't a lucky catch. Come on. Just because it works out doesn't mean it's not lucky. You can draw that up in the playbook. Come on. And on top of that, yeah, that, that's a very rational conversation we should be having because, one, it's a bad decision by Brock Purdy. You're throwing a go route with the DB on top of your receiver. And if you're going to throw that ball, you have to intentionally underthrow it to make the D-back come back through the receiver's back, maybe get a P.I. call, but at least give your chance, your guy a chance at a 50-50 ball. That's not a 50-50 ball. That's literally a 95-5 a, a ball because there's a 5% chance. Well, no, I'm not even going to go that far. That's a 99-1 ball. He threw it. In a, there's a 1% or less chance that that ball hits the D-back, bounces, and IU comes down with it. Ayuk had no chance to make a play on that on, on that ball unless something lucky like this happened. It bounces up in the right way, and then he can recover and get in position to try to make something on it. He can't make a play on it in the air because when the D back when the D backs on top of your receiver, you can't throw a go ball over the top and lead your receiver because you're throwing it to the defensive back at that point, like he's the intended receiver. You have to underthrow that ball to let your receiver have a chance to work back, track that ball, and force the defensive back to come through his back to get it. So, bad decision to, I, I wouldn't even throw that ball, but there's that's the only way to throw it, is to undershoot it and give Ayuk a 50-50 chance at it. Bad decision to throw the ball, horrible throw, bad ball placement, and then horrible play by the defender. He literally got two hands on it, went right through his hands. I mean, got both hands up and right through his hands, hit him in the face. So not only do you not intercept it, give me interception, the quarterback dropped on your face. You don't even knock it away. You let it bounce right off your face, up in the air, and IU comes down with it. And yeah, guys, I mean, we all know football, the way it's an oblong-shaped ball, it can bounce anywhere. The fact that, it, that he misses... The fact that Purdy makes a bad decision, makes a bad throw, the D-back misses it, 
and it goes right through his hands. And the fact that it goes through his hands and then hits him in the face and bounces basically straight up perfectly into Ayuk's hands instead of bouncing forward, bouncing back, bouncing the opposite direction, bounces so perfectly off his face that it goes straight up into Ayuk's hands. Come on. You're going to sit there and pretend like that's not a lucky play. Richard Sherman, I, I'm not talking about what ifs and this and that, and these guys trying to make rational points of what we said last and what I said last night of you should have called time out there. The guy has to make that catch. If, they, if that ball gets intercepted, we're having a different conversation. If Reynolds catches that third nine instead of Stone Cold dropping another one, we could be having a different conversation. So those field goals absolutely would have changed the game there. You lost by three. That was six points you left on the field. Absolutely. Those are rational conversations. That's rationally. We're not saying that the 49ers didn't win the game. We're not saying that Brock Purdy didn't play well in the second half, despite that Ayuk was not a good play. That was not a good throw or a good decision. And he got lucky and it worked out. And San Francisco got lucky and it worked out. And But those are it, the, the fact that you got a lucky fumble on the, on literally like the next play on uh, Gibbs, those things. I mean, that's part of analyzing the game, saying, hey, if these things would have went differently, if if Reynolds catches that, it's lucky. You're lucky that he drops that. There's no way he drops that ball. He's going to catch that 99 out of 100 times. There's no way he's going to drop that third nine. He's going to catch that 99 out of 100 times. That's part of analyzing the game, saying, hey, listen, you know, there's there's plays that Detroit left on the field. That if they make those plays, the game probably turns out differently. You have to be able to make those plays. That's part of analyzing the game. And the fact that Richard Sherman is just, no, no, you see, I, no, no, no. I, I'm not going to let you guys analyze the game because you guys are talking about what ifs instead of what is. Well, I want to talk about what is. What is, is it's okay, Richard. The 49ers won the game. Nobody's saying they, they didn't deserve to win the game or that they didn't win the game. Nobody's saying that. It's okay to say, yeah, we won the game, we fought our asses off, we came back, but we got some breaks along the way, and man, we, we needed them. It's okay to say that. There's nothing wrong with that. But he just wants to go at Skip Bayless and not let Keyshawn talk and just dominate the whole conversation and, and say stuff like, there's no such thing as luck, it's a 51-yard completion, that's what it is. It's, he looks so dumb, and he ruins the conversation. These guys can't, we, you, these guys can't even have rational conversations analyzing the game, talking about things that actually have me, oh, you guys want to talk about what if, I want to talk about what is. What do you mean? That, that's, the dumb, that's the dumbest thing you could say. They're talking about what is. What is, is Reynolds dropped the ball. That's what is. That happened. We all watched it with our own eyes. You want to pretend like just because we're saying he should have caught it, that that's not reality. No, reality is he should have caught it and he dropped it. Twice. Reality is Dan Campbell should have kicked two field goals and he passed on six points and that cost him the game. That's reality. That That's what happened. We watched it. Now, granted, obviously, credit to San Francisco because they took advantage of those mistakes and those missed opportunities. Credit to them. Absolutely. But to sit there and, and, and pretend like we can't analyze things that happened in the game and mistakes that were made that shouldn't have been made and and how things could have been differently if, if those mistakes weren't made. That's part of your job. That's the point of the show. That's why debate shows and and sports and anal anal analyst shows exist. That's the point of it. And he's ruining the conversation. He ruins multiple segments every day on every show. I. It's time. Richard Sherman's got to go. Yes, he's, he's great on NFL Live and Thursday Night Football. Why? Because he's not asked to be in a, de in a debate format like this. He's asked of, hey, Richard, break down the film. What, what do you see from this, from this team's defense and how are they executing? Break down the film. What, what, are you, what are you seeing from their offense? And obviously, he's one of the smarter, smarter players that have played in the league. Obviously, he can break down film and tell you what the guys are doing and, and how they're doing it and how they're executing. But when you start letting him talk about opinions and get out on a debate show format, he's terrible. He's awful. And it's time for him to go. He's ruining the show. The show is unwatchable when it's segments with Richard Sherman, especially when it's things that he doesn't want to talk about. The Dallas Cowboys, 
whether say, whether his teams, San Francisco and Seattle, got lucky, when it's things that he doesn't want to talk about, he absolutely wants to sit there and pretend like he's right and everybody else is wrong and there's no reason anybody else should talk. He's the only one that should be allowed to speak. It, I mean, I understand you play for the 49ers. You're a 49ers fan, Richard. I get it. I got it. I understand. We all know. Just because you're a 49ers fan, it's okay to say, yeah, that was a bad ball by Brock Purdy. He played phenomenal. Give him all his credit, but that was a bad ball. That one could have been a pick. Probably should have been a pick. But thank God Ayuk focused all the way through and turned that into something and bailed him out. Thank God. Because we needed it. Can't have those conversations. He's he's just dead fat. He's going to defend everything and pretend like there's nothing that's lucky in the NFL because in his words, luck doesn't exist. There's no such thing as being lucky. That doesn't exist. And the only thing that's what is, is what is. It's not, oh, well, let's talk about how this 51-yard completion happened. No, it doesn't matter how it happened. All we know is it's 51-yard completion. That's all that mattered. Oh, it doesn't matter what, how how San Francisco stopped him. All that matters is they stopped him. Well, they, they didn't stop him. It does matter because the Lions stopped themselves. Reynolds dropped the ball. San Francisco got burned on, on defense. He, he dropped a fourth and two. You, you got burned. Great play call, great route. Dude Stone Cold dropped it. That's your fault. That's that's their fault. You didn't you didn't do anything on that play, but other than lose the play and then the guy drops it, they you lost the play, and the and the D back let it hit him in the face instead of picking it off or knocking it down. He lets him hit it in the face and knock it up to Brandon Ayuk. That's that's reality. And if you can't have these conversations, you shouldn't be on these shows. And like I said, this happens so often. And Richard Sermon says so many absurd things like this on the show, when he's in mad mode of, oh, and making all his faces, and oh, well, all I want to talk about is what ifs. I'm tired of what ifs with you guys. I can't, I can't. Y'all piss me off with these what ifs. When he's in that mode, it's unwatchable, and it's time for him to go. Absolutely time for him to go, and like I said, it happens so often that we might end up making this little mini-series. Dumb things Richard Sherman says until he inevitably gets fired because Keyshawn is frustrated and, and tired of putting up with him Skip and him have had history. Skip's never liked him, but Skip was smart enough to say, well, we'll put Richard on because of my history. People will tune in to watch me and Richard go at it. Yeah, that's smart. Let's do that. But Skip's fed up with it. Michael Irvin's fed up with it. Keyshawn's fed up with it. The producers have to be fed up with it. So it's time for him to go. Absolutely time for him to go. And like I said, if it continues at this rate like it has been, where he's this dumb and he's this stupid and he's ruining this many segments with his absolute nonsense, then we might do a, we might do this all the time, do a little spinoff of dumb shit that Richard Sherman said today. Asinine quotes by Richard Sherman. I don't know what we'll name it. You guys let me know what you know what you want to name it in the comments. Thanks for tuning in, guys. As always, like, share, and subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when content's coming out. And you can catch these videos when they drop. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate you. Peace out. Raw takes. No apologies, as always. Richard, shut up. Get your shit together. Stop, stop, stop being dumb. Just stop. <laughs>